Hey guys, what's up? TSP Tutor here, new video from TSP Tutor channel. Uh, this video is going to be on the TSP Tutor Control X1 SD mapping, uh, SD being for the sample deck mapping. So this is not going to be a main mapping, this is not going to be on the main page of your Control X1. This will be on the sample page, or on the uh, shift MIDI page, I'm sorry, of your Control X1. Now, no matter where you downloaded it from, you could have got it from um, TrackDevival.com, from DJTechTool.com, you could have got it from my Twitter page, from my Google Maps page, uh, Google Plus page, I'm sorry. Um, you've got a number of different places. Uh, pretty much it's going to be a zip file to download, and it'll be uh, named here, TSP Tutor Control X1 Sample Deck Mapping.zip. Now, all you got to do if you're on a Mac is double-click it, and it'll zip itself. Um, if you're on a PC, you might need WinZip or 7-Zip or one of those programs. Um, but, you know, there are open source options out there for you to be able to download this and uh, unzip it. If you do have any problems with that, go ahead and give me a, shoot me an email or a tweet, let me know, and I'll put it in a different format for you. Now, once you have it open, you'll have a folder here. There'll be five different, um, files in there. The whole folder itself should be about 313 megabytes. Not that big. Now the first file is going to be a uh, README file. It's pretty much going to tell you what you need to do. Um, it's going to walk you through installing this. Um, the second one will be a PDF showing you what everything does. No biggie. Third one's going to be your TSI. The fourth and the fifth are something you shouldn't have to worry about. Those are for a controller editor. Um, so in this video, we're not really going to worry about them. Um, but if you do, if something's not working, you know, shoot me a tweet and I'll show you guys how to use those. Alright. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to just move this over to the side. Alright, and let's open up Tractor. Now, this is pretty much just an empty Tractor page. I'm going to make it full screen. And I'm going to get into our preferences here. What I'm going to do is, we're going to go to Controller Manager. Uh, make sure your Control X1 is installed. When you plug it in for the first time, it should tell you that uh, it wants to replace some of its presets just okay that it might um, get rid of some of your presets but just okay for now um, it should be fine make sure you have it installed though. Um, once you do have uh, your control x1 installed and you're ready to install the TSI file for my mapping what we're going to do is we're going to go to add and we're going to go to import and what you want to do is you want to navigate over to that folder where you had my uh, we downloaded the mapping file. So it's in the TSP Twitter Control X1 sample deck mapping. You're going to double click on that and actually import the TSI file. You'll hit open down here. I already have it installed, so there's no need to, uh, to install it again for me. Now, once you've gotten that done, click on device and you're going to go over to TSP Tutor Control X1 SD mapping. Make sure your import and output are set to your, uh, to your Control X1. If you do have multiple Control X1s plugged in, Easiest way to tell which one you're going to uh, hook it up to is going to be by unhooking the one that you're not going to be using. And that way you can tell which one's which. Once you have this all done, go ahead and close. Something I do recommend is always, always, always exit out of your program and restart it. Um, whenever you're working with Tractor, I would always recommend that. Since I've already had mine set up for it, I don't really need to do that. So we're just going to go to the next step. Now, this is where the actual X1 comes in handy. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my second camera here. Alright, and my second camera is turned out so we could have uh, the X1 in, in uh, recording here. Alright, so first thing you do to get into the map, to the uh, page where our mapping is at, is you're going to hit the shift and the hot cue button. Hot cue should turn green, letting you know it's in MIDI mode. Okay, once we're in MIDI mode, the good stuff can start. Now, the top two buttons here, the browser buttons, those are going to be working the same way as they worked in the other, in pretty much the stock Control X1 mapping. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load up a, uh, okay, let me sort these by key. I'm going to load up just whatever sample and uh, go ahead and play that. And I'll show you guys how to load that up in a second here. So here we go. Alright, so I'm gonna scroll this track. Just play this one. So what I'm gonna do to load it, 
is I'm push shift and the in button. And to play it, to just trigger it, I can either push the out button. And as you can see, once I let go, it'll stop playing. Or I can push the in button and that'll play it repeatedly, repeating, or continuously. Now, I can do this on either side. So let's say I want to scroll to another one. Push shift and in. And we'll go ahead and we'll play that as well. Uh, the bottom knobs will let you scroll your crates or your playlist. Um, so it comes in handy when you have your samples over multiple pages or multiple playlists. Now once I get my, uh, my navigation screen working, I'll go ahead and go back to that. While we have our, our sample ducks up, one thing we can do is go ahead and put a back, or go ahead and uh, use our filter. So what I've done is I've mapped the main buttons without the shift button to just bring your filters. So one thing you can do, come over here, uh, actually, in the top one. And I'm not sure whether or not you're going to be able to hear it, but you can definitely see it in the screen. It's going to be working on filter and filter on off button is going to be the button next to it. And that works with all the filters here. Now, let's say I do want to get into my volume. All I got to do is hit the shift button and twist the knob. And same works for the other side. If I let go of shift, it'll be my filter. There we go. So let's say I want to load up another sample. I can pretty much just hit shift and button on the first row. And so these first rows will be your load. And let's say I want to get rid of that sample. I can hit shift and a button on the second row. And it will eject the sample. But I want to keep it so we'll load it back up. And remember to trigger. And while you're while you're holding down trigger, you can actually push your first row button, and it'll make it continuous. Now FX1 and FX2 are mapped out to do something. Um, first FX is going to be your delay. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to make a delay echo freeze. All right, and the second one is going to do uh, slicer. Stuff like that. And then you can hear slicing. Um, now I do gotta rework it because they did uh, change the way effects work in the in uh, the sample decks. Let's so see, you didn't want it to happen to one, you could just unclick it there. And that's pretty much how it works. Um, it's really simple to get this working. If you guys do have any uh, questions. Feel free to tweet me at TSP Tutor, um, Google Plus me, email me, you know, get in contact with me. Let me know um, if you guys want me to change the, the map in a little bit, I'll go ahead and do that. Now, uh, I have gotten a comment about the, uh, the knobs being mostly for the filters. That is at my liking because I use more filters than I do anything else. But if you guys would like the knobs to work, the volume and then filter with the shift button. Let me know and I'll make that mapping available within the next week or two. Alright? Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, have a great day.